You may never look at a semi-truck the same way again after watching this report. A grieving mother contacted the CBS2 investigators after her daughter was killed in a preventable truck accident. Her efforts to get federal regulators to create new safety measures had been ignored. That's when she turned to Pam Zekman for help in stopping a road danger. It's one of the scariest sights for a motorist. You're eye level with a semi-trailer and your car is heading for a collision like this one on I-94. The newly engaged couple inside the car were driving to a Thanksgiving dinner. The roads were icy and their car slid underneath the long side of the trailer. 26-year-old Roya Sadi was killed. Four years later, her mother Lois is still haunted by the loss. It's an ache in the heart that never goes away. It's just sadness. They're called side underwrite accidents. It's when a car crashes underneath the trailer of a semi-truck. Oftentimes, the massive wheels crush the car and whoever's in it. A year after Roya Sadi died, there was a similar accident on the Northwest Tollway near Hoffman Estates. And this one last year in Gary. Got a uh, car that went up underneath the semi and the driver Just before the driver was about to exit I-80, her car collided with a truck alongside her. 24-year-old Yolandria Davis, the mother of two children, was on her way to work. Did she stand a chance? No. She was killed instantly. From my understanding, her neck was broken. There are no records on the number of side underwrite accidents, but truck safety experts estimate that hundreds die each year. As for survivors... Close to about a thousand a year uh, survive in side underwrite accidents, but are severely and permanently disabled. Like Zhen Ming Chen, he's been in a coma since 2006 when the car he was riding in turned a corner and collided with a truck. The prognosis is poor and the hope of any kind of recovery is, uh, you know, slim to none. Ten years ago, federal regulations went into effect requiring rear guards on most new semi-truck trailers. But nothing was done to provide similar guards on the sides of the trailers. And they're needed, says this former federal highway safety official. Well, I think that, that the, uh, the Department of Transportation has been truly negligent in its um, uh, failing to address this issue. The trucking industry opposes side guards, saying they would weigh too much and cost too much. It's not true. It's a generic argument of the trucking industry that anything that somehow takes away from payload is illegitimate as a safety approach. One legitimate approach, he suggests, is this prototype of a side guard made by a company that ran crash tests, showing what happens without a guard and then what happens with a guard. It stops the car from going underneath. It was very effective in a crash test. This animation shows what could have happened if the truck Roya Sadi crashed into had side guards. Roya Sadi's life would have been saved with side guards. I was just so angry to know that there's something that could have been done. Now she's trying to do something by paying for billboards to warn others about the danger. If it can save just one life, it'll be worth it. Something has to be done in Washington to save lives. Two mothers hoping the deaths of their daughters will prompt action. Save somebody else's life. Put those rails on those trucks. Trucking industry officials declined our request for an on-camera interview. A spokeswoman for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the sides of trailers would need to be significantly redesigned and strengthened to make a guard useful, a claim safety experts deny. We will be reporting more on this issue. And if you have a tip for us on this or another story, log on to our website at cbs2chicago.com and click on the two investigators.